Good afternoon to all the viewers and welcome back to YCC Live, World Class Culinary Online. Today we have the last but yet another interesting session in the series of webinars on Mediterranean cuisine and it is on the flavors of France. I will now hand over to our host, Shanaz Raja, Director of Courses at the ICC Dubai. Over to you, Shanaz. Thank you, Karun. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Cooking with Chef Sergio from our Faculty of Cookery here at the International Center for Culinary Arts in Dubai. After the webinar last week, I asked Sergio what he would like to cook for us this week. And do you know what he said? He said, Indian. So I said, Sergio, but we are doing flavors of the Mediterranean. How did you get such an idea? So he says, you know, he thought a bit and he says, it's you. You keep calling me Vasco de Gama. And I got a bit carried away with that. So I had to remind him that he, was, he didn't have a ship and he was backpacking. And he had to stop, start trekking to his next destination. So here he is at the French Riviera, and now he's going to give us a demonstration on two beautiful dishes from there. Sergio has given a lot of thought to choosing dishes he's going to do with us today. Not just focusing on flavors, but also on a few techniques that you could take away and probably practice and experiment with after the webinar. Chef Sergio, we look forward to enjoying this webinar with you. And do make sure to describe the aromas as you go. Great. Thank you, Ms. Shanez, for always an exciting introduction. Welcome, bonjour, to my episode number four, where, yes, you guessed it, I have reached France. Yeah. And obviously, I'm yours, Chef Sergio, and I have my lovely student with me. Amar, who is currently part of our senior professional batch. So today we're going to be giving you two beautiful dishes that I love, two traditional dishes as well. One which is the seafood boya base and the other which I'm going to be blowing your mind with a papete of sole, with a prawn, salt pecan and a verb blanc sauce. So definitely two beautiful dishes that is awesome to make at home for your friends and family. So, shall we get started, Chef? Yes. We're ready. Sure. All right. So, firstly, we're going to start off with our boya base. Yeah. Um, what we will start with, we're going to start off by making a little stock, okay, for our boya base. We'll add it and make our boya base up to a certain point, which at the end, I'll start plating, not plating, start actually cooking off our other dish, all right, the sole. And then right at the end, we will start adding in our fish. Right, because the fish is going to cook quite quickly, yeah. So, we'll do that in the last five minutes of the webinar, right? So, firstly, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be correct, chef. We're going to be making a fish stock, okay? So, over here, we're going quite traditional, okay? I've got some lemon, some orange peels, I have all my shells from my shrimp, which I cleaned earlier, right. And then I have a bougay garni. Now, some of you might actually be wondering, what is a bougay garni? Right, so there's plenty of flavors in my bougay garni. I've got some parsley, I've got some thyme, I've got some peppercorns, and a bay leaf. And now I'm going to actually be wrapping this up in a leek leaf. Right, so it's just taking the leek, cutting it down the middle, and then obviously I'm going to take a little bit of string, and I'm literally just going to tie it up. You don't have to use leek. If you don't have leek, you could always just use like either a mutton cloth or a cheese cloth. But the reason we do this is so that you don't really need to necessarily fish out all these ingredients a little bit later once you want to take it out. And obviously, there's so much flavor in this little awesome little pouch that, you know, it's just going to infuse it quite nicely. Right, so I'm going to throw that in my water. Right, let's put this a little bit higher. You don't want to have it too high, guys. Right, just on a simmering mode, right? I'm going to throw in my orange peels. Yes, orange peels in there. Great. And then obviously my prawn shells. Right, um, you may also roast this in the oven, which is perfectly fine. You'll just get more of this bisky kind of smell and flavor to it. I'm going to go straight up, 
Okay, so I'm going to add that in there. Great. And now we're literally just going to simmer that up for the next 10 to 15 minutes. More than enough time. You can go up to about 20 minutes, but you don't want to go too long or else it will start to get a little bit bitter. Right, so that is our stock on now. So, Chef, do you just want to get us our cut for our wear base, please? Yes, sir. Right, so let's get on to our boy base. Super, super exciting. Right, let's go through some of our ingredients. We have some extra virgin olive oil, fennel, onions, leek, chopped fennel, garlic, tomato concasse, so just chopped up tomatoes, yeah, skin off as well. I've got some red, I mean, some white wine non-alcoholic, I have some chopped up thyme, some margarine, saffron, and cayenne pepper. Right, so those are the ingredients to start off this beautiful broth, or sometimes I even like to call it a stew. Right, Chef, do you just want to give me the seafood quickly out the fridge so I can just explain that? Let's put this on quickly. That, that's yeah. All right, so going on to our seafood, right, that we're going to be adding near the end. I have some beautiful mussels. I have some shrimp, which has been cleaned and deveined. Got some now perch, got some beautiful salmon, and some awesome clams. Now, traditionally, with this soup in the area of Marcel, you pretty much get the seafood that you get from the ocean, the Mediterranean. It's so beautiful there. So the whole Mediterranean, they share a lot of different ingredients, like fish. There's a lot of fish that comes out of those oceans. They are just on another level. So I'm using what I have today, which is perfectly fine, right? Obviously, I do not want to keep my fish out for too long. Yeah. Um, so we're just going to pop that back in the fridge. Okay. So now we can get started. Our stock is on. We're going to start off with a little bit of olive oil. Not much, just a little. Okay. Then we're going to start off. Let me grab a little spoon now that I have. Yeah. We we're going to start off with our fennel. Oh, there we are. That's the temperature I want. Yeah. No, 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 it's perfect. Leave it on for sure. That's great. Right, we're going to add in our fennel. We will even just add all of it. Right, fennel, onions. And leeks. That is going in. Delicious. Now, you just want to sweat this out. You do not want to give it too much color. You just want to give it a nice sweat. Let all those sugars come out and all those flavors and aromas start coming out. There's nothing like cooking Mediterranean food. There's always these beautiful flavors coming out. I can't start to smell it. You can smell it already? Yeah. Fantastic. I love it. Right. So our brisk is going. If you can see that, you can even see the shell starting to change a little bit of color, especially the little tails. Yeah, like I said, you don't want it on a boil, just a little simmer. Right, so we're just going to sweat this out for 30, 30 seconds to a minute. It's perfectly fine. Right, then I'm going to be adding in some garlic, right, after a minute of sweating. I don't like to really add the garlic in the beginning because it can tend to burn. Right, so just add it in near the end and it's a lot better. Sweat that out for an extra 30 seconds. I'm going to add in a little bit of fennel, chopped fennel in there. You can just already imagine these flavors are just coming out. I'm going to put it all, seafood. Right, so now we let that go. It's already, it's, it's fantastic. It's a beautiful smell. And once the rest of the ingredients actually start going in, it just becomes even better and better. Always be careful, I've said this before, that if you're cooking on a gas, burner yeah always be careful on the side of your pots that's where it tends to burn the most so you always try to scrape the sides of your pots yeah because obviously the flames are going to come up 
and they'll start to burn and leave a little bit of brown spots everywhere and that's what you don't want. Right, so now I've got into that stage that it's starting to change a little bit of color, but not too much color. I'm going to add in my tomatoes, one of the main ingredients in this dish as well. And in Mediterranean cooking, we all just love tomatoes. Right, that's beautiful. Give that a little sweat. Perfect. Now, we're going to add in, in our wine. Okay. Non-alcoholic wine is what I'm using. You may use or not use non-alcoholic, purely up to your preference at the end of the day. So, this is where you will put up your heat, right? And you're going to be cooking this liquid down until about half. Yes. Okay. Have you ever made a seafood boil base before? Yeah. You have? Yes. Okay, we're going to see if it tastes as good. Yeah. If not better. <laughs> <laughs> well, sure. All right. So now we just let this go for a good three minutes on a bit of a rapid boil. Let that wine reduce a bit. Okay. Great. I love it. All right. Let me put this over here. You may take that away. Thank you, Chef. Making me the spatula though, thank you very much. Right, so now rapid boiling is happening. My stock has gotten a little bit to a boil, which now you can maybe even smell that. It's this beautiful seafood, beautiful prawn and orange flavor coming out. Right, that's just great. Okay, so give this about a few just about 30 seconds more. You know, this is just such a lovely soup compared to what we've made before. You know, um, I just love seafood, really. So this on a Sunday in the afternoon, out with your family, all these fresh flavors, all these lovely and exciting flavors and aromas coming out, you know, as a starter, even as a main course, it's fantastic. Yeah, so having a little glass of white wine there even with it, you know, in the middle of France, Ooh, yeah. can you imagine? must be the dream is the dream yeah. all right so my stock has reduced by half right you want to give me a strainer right so now what we're going to be doing we're going to be taking my prawn stock that i've made and all we're going to be doing right it's not the really safest way i'm doing this but we're just going to be straining this liquid in whoops going a little bit to the side there perfect i'm there i'm just gonna Stop it out there. It's pretty much done. How many more drops are there? Not much drops. All right. So that is perfect. Thank you so much, Chef. Right. So now we're going to be leaving this just to simmer. Yeah. Not rapid boil. We just want it to simmer beautifully for the next 10 to 15 minutes. So what I shall be doing now, I'm just going to put this up here. Let's see. We lost a bit of a scan there. Right, so we are back on live. Right, so now I've got four more ingredients to add. Okay, we can add them now. I'm going to add some margarine. Do not add much, just a little pinch is great. You know, just to even just cover the front of it. Don't want to add too much. That is perfect. I've got some time. Time is lovely as well. You may also saute your time with the onions in the beginning, right? Don't add too much time. It's got a lot of flavor in there. I'm just going to add a little bit of pinch because I'm addicted to time, right? Then I've got some beautiful saffron strands, which we are going to throw in there. Okay, that's going to give beautiful color and aroma as well, right? Like I mentioned when I made the paella, you may also fry your saffron if you like. Not fry, more of give it a light toast. Okay, and then I'm going to add in a little bit of cayenne pepper. Right, just a bit, just a little pinch. Okay, let's turn that down because now we have reached boiling point, which is 100 degrees Celsius. So we just want to add a nice simmer. Perfect. So how easy was that, guys? Literally, we have a soup very quickly. Right? 
That's going to be going for the next 10 to 15 minutes. And now what I'm going to be starting with you guys, I am going to be going on to my soul. Some of you might know what saltfish is, some of you might not. Well, you're definitely going to find out in the next few seconds. So, Chef, do you mind getting me that out of the fridge, please? Right. Blue board. Definitely blue, blue board. Wouldn't be using a red board right now. Right? Blue board. Think of the ocean. It's for seafood. Always. Yeah. Now, that is a soul. Which camera can you catch me on? See how beautiful that is. Let's go. Beautiful. That is a beautiful soul. What is a soul? A soul is a flat fish, meaning it is not a fish that goes in the ocean like so. It's at the bottom on the seabed and it goes like so. So a round fish obviously has two fillets. A flat fish has four fillets. Yeah? Yes, sir. Currently the senior batch, they are in starting their seafood module tomorrow. So we're going to have lots of fun yeah. tomorrow, my friend. We will be smelling fantastic by the end of a nine-hour shift, cleaning many of different fishes, which is very exciting for them. Right? Thank you so much. Right. So no need to scale that. Right? I'm going to show you guys a very easy technique just to take the skin off, and then I'm quickly going to just fillet it. Right. So first thing that you'll need is a filleting knife. Right? A knife with a little bit of flexibility on the blade. All right, so, great. What you also want is some salt next to you. You may take a little bit of salt and just even drop it on the side, right? But what you want to do, you actually want to get to the tail side, right? Right near the end of the tail, there's not much meat. So you just want to get about there, make a little incision, yeah? Crack it, just a bit. Then you actually just want to get a little bit of salt on your fingertips. And you actually just want to get underneath there and actually start trying to take that skin out. All right, sometimes you feel like you don't really get that skin. But there I have it. There's that skin. Now you just have to be patient. All right, you may also clean up the hairs on the side, but not necessarily you don't need to do it. Look at that. How easy. All right, keep a steady hand. Hold it down. Keep going. If you're good, you don't even have to do the other side. But keep going, keep going. Turn it over. Did I get it? Did I get it? Yes, I have. Take a little bit more salt on my fingertips just for a little bit of grip. Right, and look at that. Keep going. How easy was that, Chef? Okay, if you lose grip, grab a little bit more salt and keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing. Right, look at that. So simple, so easy. I'll get rid of that. Right, so now I have my salt. Just want to give me a little bit of paper towel there. Right, normally I love wearing gloves when doing seafood. When going for the skin, there's nothing like just using your hands quickly. Right, so I'm going to put on some gloves now just to do the rest. But for the skin, I always find that my, I can never actually feel it with the salt and then I sort of never can get the grip. So that's why I have just used my hands. Just going to give it a quick little rinse shot with me. Great. Okay. Thank you, Chef. Let me try my hands. Off these gloves will not go on. So, sole is such a lovely fish. You can roast it whole if you like. Yeah? Super fantastic. You know, put some salt on, some lemon, some garlic on there. Roast it at about 160 in the oven for about 15 odd minutes. Take it out and literally just put it on the plate as is, and literally it just falls away from that body. Right, how's that looking there, Chef? It's looking good. It's smelling good. Yeah, I'm almost like walking with it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, oops, I just broke the glove. Okay, but it's fine. Just give me another one there, sorry. Uh, so many gloves out there these days, but these are actually the best gloves, obviously, to be using because they are powder-free. So the last thing you want to use is surgical gloves, you know. Yeah. They might be great, but you don't want powder all over your products. Okay, so now I've got my sole, my cute little sole. Now you get four fillets to a sole, one over here, 
what over here? Can you see that line over there, Chef? You're actually getting two lessons because you're doing this tomorrow. <laughs> okay. And then you turn it over and there'll be another one over here and another one over here. The back end of the sole has a little bit of smaller fillets. Right. So this line, if you can see on the camera, there's a natural line down, right? You just follow that line all the way down and literally you can really see that fillet's already showing. Yeah. So, like I said, you want a filleting knife because you want that little bit of flexibility. Right, get in there with your fingers, run it around. Go one more. You actually want to hear. Can you hear that? Ta -ta 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 as I'm going, that mouth is it's against the bones, exactly. Right, look how easy that is. Right, obviously, if you want to be using a specific knife for a specific job. Right, so I'll just slice it over there. Right, and we'll just loosen it. Sometimes that happens. Okay, and I've got my first beautiful fillets. Right, now we go on to the other side. I'll just turn it over there. Even here it's a little easier. Go down. This one is the biggest one. Right, go ahead. My knife is super sharp. They get in there. Get in there. You don't want to waste anything. Great. That is good. Cuts it along there. Look at that fillet. That is the biggest one out the whole sole. That's beautiful. Stunning. Right. Turn it over. Now, the smaller ones. Sometimes a little bit more difficult to get out. And I have a lot of few giggles tomorrow with my students because this one, it's a lot smaller fillets, so you have to really get in there, right? Look at that, just coming away so easy. A lot of people think this is quite difficult, but it really isn't. I like going along that line even sometimes, especially on this side, right? Because it just frees it easily. Beautiful, how's that looking? Another fillet, a lot smaller. Turn it over one more time. Go down. Let's get this last one out. Great. Okay, Free that last one. The last one is a little bit smaller sometimes. Okay, awesome. This, you can cut up, cut the head away. And you can use it for a beautiful fish stock. fish stock. Yeah, so put in your leeks, your carrots. Don't actually leave out your carrots because they'll actually dye your stock. So just leeks, onions, and celery. Yes. Put in your fish. 20 minutes. You have, you have a beautiful fish stock. Correct. Yes, okay. So um, I'll just be putting that. Don't worry. We're going to have so much tomorrow from class. We're not going to know what to do with that. Absolutely. Right. So that is gone. That is gone. Right, now, what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be just marinating my fish. So I've got one fillet, yes, I have another fillet, another one, and another one. Great. So, I'm going to be getting my marinade that I'm going to be using. Come down. Do not drop. Right, thank you, Chef. Right, all I'm going to be doing here now, I'm going to be taking a little bit of my lemon zest, throwing some lemon zest in there. That's going to be just delicious flavors going all around. Right, a little bit of thyme in there. Yes, definitely, beautiful flavor. Not only that, you will actually be making this dish during your program. So next yes, week, sir. you will be making this dish. So you actually one step ahead. Yes. All right. A little bit of olive oil on there. Just a little drizzle. And not too much lemon juice. Just a little bit of lemon juice, yeah? Let's throw it on there a little bit. Great. A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. A little bit of salt. A little bit of pepper, 
right? Now, everything that I've put on there, you can see within the gaps, they're everywhere. Just pass me the gloves there, please, Chef, quickly. Yes, Thank you. We're just going to give it a little marinade. Okay. Oh, these gloves. There we are. So that boil base is looking fantastic. You don't really want too much of a rapid boil, but it's looking great. I can smell it. That saffron is already starting to really infuse in there, especially with the color. You know, it wasn't as red and orange earlier. Now it's just really popping with color. Right, so now, even with everything, you can even take the bottom side of it, you can even rub it against that side. It's all going in together, yeah? Marinate it all up. Everything, everywhere, that's great. All right, happiness, I am super happy. Now, we're gonna be creating our pupettes. Okay, so please give me the ring mold, Chef. The mold, uh, where do we have the mold? Yeah, there's the mold over there. Right, so, got this, you're gonna need a ring depending on what you have, how big you want to make them, all right? So what you're going to need, I suggest, take a little bit of olive oil on your finger, right, and just rub that mold on the inside. Okay, because now this is what we do, we're doing a puppet, so it's going to be, you know, the, the salty con is actually going to be in the inside. Yeah. So we're creating a round mold, pretty much. Okay, so I like to take my fattest piece first, as my bottom, right? So I wish you could actually get in here and actually see what I'm doing. But all I'm doing, I'm just going all the way around my mold. Okay. You will see the end products, how it goes. I just squeeze it a little bit. So now you can see my fingers are inside and it's as actually all the way around on the inside of my rim. Gonna take another piece and I'm gonna put it on there as well. Okay, go, go, go. Right, perfect. And you just over layer it, just a little. Give it a little squeeze as well. Okay, great. I'm gonna take my third piece. Now I'm gonna go again and try to get to the top now. Okay, I will show you guys what I have done in a second. Right, depending on how big your soul was, you might not have enough to fill up a full mold like I have. Or maybe you just need a little bit extra. Like I feel as I don't really need it, but I'm going to put it just so we use the whole fish. Yeah? Right. So give it a little squeeze. Give it a little compact. Right? Then if you can look in there. Can you get in there? Can you see? Perfect. Yeah, I'll try to tweak it as much as I can so you can actually see in there. Perfect, yeah? You guys get the idea. Now, you might be wondering, what am I gonna do with this now? I'm gonna steam it, yeah? So, what I wanna do now, I'm gonna grab a little bit of tin foil, right? A little basic tin foil, break it up, you can be a bit rustic with it. Wrap it up, wrap, 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 wrap. Creates a bit of a, a little bit of a ball. You don't want to make it too tight. The fish is going to shrink a little bit. Yeah? So you just want it to fit in nice and snug. Right, so I think I might have gotten it. Let's see. Yeah, if you put it too tight, once it actually shrinks, then literally when you try to pull it out, you could actually break up your fish. So that is what I have now at the moment. Just a little bit of tin foil in there, and it's just holding everything together. All right, just so it doesn't fall apart. Right, so now that's going to be steamed for, depends. I say four minutes is great, five minutes is good. You know, depending on how thick your, your soul was, um, it depends how long you're actually going to cook it for. But I say no more than a good six minutes is fine. Right. So what we'll do here, we're going to pop this in. The fridge for now while we do everything else because this is only going to take five minutes and then we will start on something else right so that is cleaning the fish um do we have a poll maybe back to you missionaries
So the poll is on. I'm yes, waiting for the you. answer. Yeah, can you see it on your screen? Can you see the poll? I can on see it. What is, this, what is special about the cuisine of the French Riviera? Okay. Yes. Great question. So we give them a few minutes to, for a few seconds to answer while you're getting organized. Yeah. Okay. 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 So 60% of the viewers say it's influenced by the Medi by Mediterranean ingredients such as olives, tomatoes, and seafood. And that is the correct answer. That is the correct answer. Definitely, Absolutely. guys. It's the Mediterranean. I mean, olives is everywhere. Tomatoes is everywhere around the Mediterranean. It's all these lovely fresh ingredients that makes the Mediterranean the Mediterranean, which I love so much. That's why I made my series on the Mediterranean, because all these flavors are just something else, really. But well done, guys. I like that most of you got that answer correct. Great question, Ms. Chanel. You're welcome, Chef. So you okay, can so let's but you can continue. Sorry. You can oh, continue. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. So on to the next thing now. All right. We're gonna start with our salty con. All right. I'm gonna show you how to make a little bit of vegetable um, spaghetti vegetables with the main course dish. You may use any vegetable you really want or any starch you really want. Today I'm going with the spaghetti vegetables, right? And I've made a beautiful um, sweet potato puree to go with it. So what we'll start first, you may just get us a pot for our salpican. Right. For our salpican, very simple, lots of flavor, right? We have butter, onions, leeks, fennel, tomato sauce, which is an interesting one, We've got some tomatoes, and we got chopped up shrimp. So let's pop this on, give it a little stand there. Good check, you got that on. Right, we'll put it on there. So our soup for me is pretty much done. I'm gonna reduce it all the way down, right, to a number one. It's already reduced by a few minutes. So it's about, I'd say about seven minutes away from adding our first fish in. So we can start the salty pan now. Right, I'm going to take a little bit of butter and throw some butter in. So I've got too hot this time. Okay, good stuff. Push that in. Thank you, Chef. Right, we've got some butter. That is melting away already. Fantastic. We're going to add, just give it a two, four, five seconds. There we are. Add some onions in there. Right, you may also add some garlic. I've left the garlic out. Great, some onions, some leek. Delicious. Right, sweat that out for a few seconds. Right, also like I said, you don't really want to give it too much color. Yes, exactly. Right. So, that is going beautifully. We'll let that go just for a few more seconds. We'll add some fennel in there. Yes, please. All right. Then, let that go. We're going to add in some concassé tomato. Whoops, let me take the spoon rather there. A little bit of tomatoes in there. Great. Then, let that sweat out a little bit. I just want to explain the spaghetti vegetables to you quickly. These are mine that I've currently had. Right? I have some carrots, some green zucchini or baby marrow in some countries, and some yellow zucchini. Now to make these very interesting, very fun, very quick to cook, you get this. It's called a peanut. Right, this spaghetti peeler. You can buy it in your supermarket, your local grocery store, wherever. It's quite fun to use, actually. Right, so you just make a little, little dent in there, so you get a little bit of a, a little bit of a grip. And literally, all you do is you peel this carrot. Right, don't peel your fingers though. Right, and you get these beautiful strands. 
It's a little bit cheating. Yeah. I won't allow the professional batch to use it. They must cut their julienne. But, you know, for at home or even some certain dishes, you know, I think it's actually quite, quite okay. Right. So, push that aside. That is beautiful at the moment. Right. We are going to add in our shrimp. This is where all the flavor is going to come out now. Mix that all together, chef. For us. Right, that shrimp's going to start changing color. Once that shrimp actually changes color, that is when we're going to add a little bit of our tomato sauce. And we will finish it up with a little bit of cream at the end. Right, this is looking lovely. How's that smell? That's what you want to smell. Those, those, oh, they're smelling absolutely divine. Right. So, while the salty can is going, right, our vegetables, we're just going to literally fry up super quickly. A little bit of butter, salt, pepper, that is it. Very simple, two minutes of frying and we are done with this, all right? So, our prawns have been cooked now very nicely. We're just gonna throw in some ketchup or tomato sauce. All right, just a good tablespoon in there. It's gonna change the color, it's gonna give us lovely flavor. You actually wanna burn it a little bit under there. Right, we'll keep our butter there for us. We'll just clear that quickly. Right, Chef. Yes, sir. So we have got into that stage where we will put our boiler base to the side. Yes, sir. Actually, no. May you please pass me our seafood out of the fridge. Yes, right, so now this is going to be going. I love how the tomato is already done. I'm going to take some of my cream now, add some of my cream in there. Too much. It's more than enough. And we're just gonna let that all come together and now we're just gonna let this actually just evaporate and all those flavors come together. Right, this is our salty cum. Right, Chef, may you please put our soul in the oven for a good five minutes. Right, so that's going. So, for our bird blanc, right, we have some shallots fish stock, white wine, and cream. Very simple, it's a quick five minute sauce, just reducing, that's about it, and we are done there. Now, I'll do that in a few seconds. What I'm gonna do now is start adding in my seafood. So, I'm gonna start off with my salmon. Salmon can go in, just a few pieces, there we are. Once again, my seafood that I'm using, I've got salmon. I've got now perch, which is going in. I have shrimp going in. This is more than enough for at least three portions for people. I could even add more if I had a little bit of a bigger pot, but I'm not going to. But my mussels and my clams, I will put in last. Let's return that's to a bit of a heat. Now you can see how that's already reducing here, Chef. Yes, sir. Right. This may go away. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Great. So, this is fantastic. Right? Reducing awesomely. This is one off a little bit. I'm going to turn it down just a little. Great. Okay. So, Beau Blanc. Chef, do you want to pass me another little pot there? And maybe a little piece of... Pass me a small one for the sauce. Thank you. Right, I'm going to push that aside because that is done. Um, it's done. That is cool. There we are. So now what I'll do, please pass me a spoon. It'll be fantastic. Thank you, Chef. I'm going to add in my um, little bit of butter. Right, that's more than enough. I'll add a little bit of butter near the end to my sauce. It's going to give us nice shine to it. Right, so, salty tag is warm, that is done, I'm happy with that. 
Right, give that a little quick little stir for the boy bay shit. Okay, so our butter is melting. We're going to be adding in. Just let that go for a few more seconds. Oh, look at that. Be gentle when you stir it now. It's more of a fold, yeah? Because you don't want to break any of that fish up. Okay, so butter is melting. I'm going to add our shallots in there. Right? Even with this sauce, you may strain it at the end if you do not want your onions in there. With this dish, I actually like to leave the onions in the beurre blanc, mm -hmm. right? Normally you should strain it. I like to leave the onions in the beurre blanc. It just gives us nice little crunchiness and gives a little bit of texture to your sauce, right? So, it's going, not catching it. There we are, okay. So that is great. That is going. I'm going to be throwing in my white wine. I'm not going to throw all of it. We only need one portion's worth. I'm going to throw in my fish stock. Equal quantities is perfectly fine. Right, and just let that reduce a little. Right, even on the high heat is perfectly fine. Right, now that my seafood is gone for a good two, three minutes, I can start adding in my mussels. Add my mussels in there. Add a few mussels in there. Add, add, add. All of these flavors. We let the mussels and the clams cook for another two minutes. Right. Oh, this is lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Nothing like going to France, guys. Going to beautiful cafe outside and just ordering something like this and just being there with a the loved one and tasting these awesome flavors. Especially in the summer. Especially in the summer, yeah. no doubt. Wow. As you're going to Monaco watching the Grand Prix or something, yeah. you know, it would be better. Right, give that a little bit of a, a little bit just of a little stir, right? Now, for our last thing that we're going to do, we are going to be frying off our vegetables, okay? So, our boil base is pretty much done, to be completely honest, right? We'll just give it a few more seconds. We'll give it like a minute or two, since our mussels were already cooked and our clams were a little bit cooked already. And the fish is done. The fish is nicely done. You don't want to overcook it, all right? So, I will be taking my pan, I'm just layering it over there, right? I'm going to move this there, because it's not reading for some reason. Let's see if it goes. My salty cunny is done. How is that done? Five minutes? Cool. Let's take a look. Open it up. Fantastic. Take that out for me, chef. Thank you. Right. I'm going to grab another pot shot quickly. Sorry if you can't see me in the screen. Okay. Whoops. That's on again. It's catching all sorts. Okay, I'm just going to pop that there, there, that's what I'm looking for, rapid boil over there. Right, sure. so what you're going to do for us, you're going to fry us up our, our vegetables, please. This can be taken away. Let me have my cream. Right, so now I have my soul. Everything looks so yummy and sexy. Yeah, I'm going to have to take this out, the tin foil very carefully so you don't break up your fish sometimes it happens if it happens it happens yep no that's fine a little bit of butter in there all right now like i said it's really up to you guys what starch and what vegetables you want to plate your dish with like i said i've got the sweet potato puree now man i've spoiled my sweet potato Blitz it up, add a little bit of butter, add a little bit of cream, and look at that. It's just delicious. Right, so I've pre-made that. I'm going spaghetti vegetables, sweet potato mash with my dish. But you may go with anything, really. All right, so, um, just want to give me a quick pop over here. Give us a quick wipe, and we are going to start plating our boya base. Right, great. Push that to the side because it's a little bit hot at the moment. Okay, so even with my bird blank, it's reduced by half, I'm going to be adding in my cream. 
Now, let that come together. Let that come together. I see a little carrot there. Did you throw a carrot into my sauce? No, I think you did. <laughs> Is it onion? Okay. I'll just play with you. All right. So, now, I've got my beautiful plates. I've got my beautiful bread, which is a rumi. Yeah? So, garlic, potato, put underneath. Then I put some beautiful cheese on top of my bread. Toasted it. Yeah? Please pass me a ladle there, chef. Ladle? Here we are. Right. So, now, and please pass me, there's a uh, slotted spoon, the big one. That's the one. Perfect. So now, look at that soup, guys. Oh, so many flavors. It's chunky. It's like stew-like. Yeah, it is pretty much a stew. Right, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take literally a whole spoon. I'm just going to throw it in. Try to get a whole bunch of different variety of different seafood, the prawns, the mussels, the clams, the tomato. Oh, my goodness. Guys, this on its own is a dish, a main course. Right, put a little there. You can always try, don't really try and place everything everywhere. Sometimes keep it rusty, guys. Where it lands, let it sit. Right, I'm happy with that. Now I'm going to take a little bit of my broth or my liquid and just top it over. Yes, please. That is delicious. Right, top it over. Top it over. Right, you could garnish with a little bit of fennel or something. I feel as less is more. You don't even need to garnish this dish because it's so beautifully colored and with oh, all the seafood and everything. Yes, if you want to get a little bit more creative, you may put the mussels in and plan it around, but I just love that rustic feel of it. So that is your boya base with a re, one of the most traditional soups out there, and the smell is just on another level of fantastic. Amazing. Okay, you like that, Chip? Right, so that is my first dish, completed. Okay, I'm going to be moving on now. I've got my soul. So yeah? Ready, That's ready. Great. Warm up my mash for me a little bit. So I'll throw just a little bit of cream in there. And then I have a little bit of cream right here. Just a little bit of cream, right? Just to warm it up so it doesn't stick or anything. It's really got salt, it's really got pepper in there. So we are safe. Right, now, this is the moment of truth. I take that out. You may see that the soul is there. Now, the mission is to try and take it out without breaking. Okay, good, I've got it. I've got it. It broke a little bit on the side, but nothing too extreme. Okay, great. So now, that is great. I'm happy with that. I'm going to grab my beautiful plates. Okay, push this to the side so you guys can see what I'm up to. Right, my sauce is ready. Right, so if you're making a lot of sauce and you actually um, have too much and you don't have time, you can always throw in just a little bit of cornstarch, mix with a little bit of water, and it will get naturally thick. All right, so that's also perfect. The puree. Yeah, puree is perfect. So what I'm going to do here, got my puree, nice and beautiful. Okay, I'm going to take some. Just going to throw it straight on the plate. Boom. A little bit there on the plate. Make a nice big block. Right. Now, all you do, put it in the middle, make a little, Amazing. little teardrop, yeah? yeah. <laughs> Amazing techniques. Amazing techniques. <clears throat> but you're learning all of this, yes? Yes. Yeah. Right. Then, I have my vegetables. Did you throw a little bit of salt and pepper? Mm -hmm. You do it with salt and pepper. I'm going to throw just a little salt and pepper. Right. Remember, always season your ingredients. Right. There's one way you could do this. You could either get a fork, roll it up, make a nice little pouch on the side. Right. I'm going to go quite simple. And I'm just going with my tongue. Right. I'm just going to take a nice bunch of vegetables. I'm just going to throw it straight in the middle. 
take a little bit more. You don't even need to cook these veggies for too long, right? There we are, absolutely stunning. Right, that can go away. Thank you, Chef. Now, last elements. How's that sauce? It's getting thicker on its own. Right, give me a spoon. And now I've got my salt pecan. You can see how nice and dry that's actually become. Right? Still wet, but dry. Now I'm going to take it and literally, actually, what I will do. I'm just going to pick my sole up, right? I'm going to put it straight on my plate. So it's nice and beautifully round. Even looks better than the picture I did, to be honest. Right. And now I'm going to be stuffing this up. Oh, yes. Sauce is ready. Switch it off. Right. Put that on. Give it a little bit of height. Reduce it as much light. Sometimes I like making a little bit more because after plating, I eat what's left over in the pot. Okay, great. So, please pass me a spoon. Ah, there was a carrot in there. There was a carrot in there. I caught you. I saw you try to hide that. Then take your carrot. So you can have your carrot now. Right, so now my sauce is done. Please pass me a spoon with no holes, though. <laughs> I caught you. I'm making you nervous now. All right, so I've got my sauce now. Sauce, literally, just go around the plate. Let it go rustic, don't really worry too much about it. Right, that looks great. Okay, then what I like to do, I actually like to have two prawns, right? Already cooked and marinated. I like to put them in together, like so. Right, oops, other way. Yeah, come on, Sergio, there we are. And I just like to pop it in like that. So then you have your beautiful plates. Right, so that is your sole papette with prawn salpicon and spaghetti vegetables with a sweet potato puree and a beer blanc sauce. So two beautiful dishes, very easy and yeah, did you enjoy that? Yes, yes. Was it fun? Yeah. Good. So, we might have any more questions. Over to you, Shanaz. For the first time, I think everybody was just watching you intently. There was no typing on the screen and no questions. I think it was ah. good explanation and very <laughs> clearly seen. Thank you, Chef. Lovely. Thank you very much. Okay. So, um, did, did we not have another poll at Michelin's? Yes, we do have another poll for them, you're right. We were supposed to put it out earlier, but we were so busy, I didn't uh, want to interrupt you. No worries. Well, do we have time to do it, maybe? Let's do it quickly. Why not? Yes, so people I'll are just still around. Yeah, I'll just put so, it. So, what is the right temperature to store fresh seafood to be cooked? Oh, I like this question. So, you were in theory class yesterday. What is the right answer? One, two, three. One, two, three. Just teaching them well. So correct. Food, how many got it right? I see 75. Oh, now it's just jumped up to 83. We're a bunch of cheats. Right, so 80 odd have got it right. Correct. So in the refrigerator between one and three, depending when you buy it, yeah, if you buy it today and you're going to cook it tomorrow, I suggest put it on a bed of ice, wrap it with clean film, try to keep it as cold as possible. Yeah, even working with seafood, you don't want to leave seafood out at room temperature for longer than 10 to 15, even 10 minutes. It's enough while you're working, marinating it. Once you're done and you're not going to cook it straight away, pop it straight back into the fridge. Okay, but that is it. What can I say? Thank you very much for joining me on my four episodes on my journey around the Mediterranean. I have really had a lot of fun. I appreciate all the comments and all the new followers and all the tags on the dishes from you guys um, over the past four weeks. Thank you very much. Thank you to my awesome team. Thank you to my awesome students. And peace. We've got many more webinars coming up. Very exciting stuff from some of my other chef colleagues. So I'd just like to say thank you. God bless. Keep safe. And see you in a few weeks. Thank you, guys. Over to you, Mission S.
Thank you, Sergio. Absolutely exquisite. Some of my favorite dishes. I love seafood. Delicate, flavorsome, healthy, and with all the natural flavors coming through. Once again, these dishes are from, from what we teach at ICCA. And if you want to experience this hands-on, you know where to come. Hope you found this webinar educative and will try out some of the techniques you just saw. Stay tuned for our next webinar on Sunday with Chef Sabine Fari on the last webinar of the series that she had planned on contemporary desserts. Same time, same place. Over to you, Karun. Thank you, Shanaz and Chef Sergio. Just yet another interesting session, and these aromas are just um, fantastic and can't wait to try it after the show. For those who missed out on the entire show, an email will soon follow with the replay video of this webinar together with the handouts as well. We look forward to seeing you in the next webinar with, uh, with Chef Sabine. Until then, goodbye from all of us here.